Christopher White. I am the technical sales representative for Chrysler Chemical for the Western United States and Canada. And I'm also the executive director for America's Best Cleaners. You guys want to come in? Come in. So water droplet. So water droplet, yeah. Water, natural solvent. Catherine, do you need one? John, you coming in here? You guys are stay out there. You're gonna come on in. Okay. We'll come in. So, so again, just to introduce everyone, if you we're just gonna do a, a brief walkthrough here in the presentation about a little bit of the background, the science of the Chrysler Milo wet cleaning system, uh, and then we'll do some actual live demonstration of the pose running in the equipment the machine. Um, for those of you who may or may not know, uh, true wet cleaning in the modern sense of the word um, is the definition, by definition, is the ability to safely and effectively clean dry clean only garments in water. Uh, in 1994, 1995, Chrysler and Mila teamed up and formulated the Chrysler Mila system for modern wet cleaning and wrote uh, several patents to that effect and introduced that into the European and also the American market. Um, the question that always comes up, you know, when we're talking about wet cleaning is why wet cleaning and what forced and what created wet cleaning or, or what were the, the forces that uh, wanted a business like Toys or or you led to adopt wet cleaning. And there's a lot of different reasons and some of them may resonate with you. Um, some of them, of, all of these may resonate with you or some may resonate with you. First and foremost, the government agencies, a lot of them are looking at phasing out solvent-based cleaning and looking at Perf obviously is the first uh, solid to, to remove from the environment. Um, and then other alternatives also. Second of all, with that, landlords. Landlords now are looking at the fact that they do not want solid based cleaning on their properties anymore for whatever that reason that may be for them, whether it's to be, be refinanced or their environmental profile or the risk associated with it, they no longer want solid based cleaning in there. Then we move down into the economic aspects of it, I'm sorry. Um, you, your clients, your marketplace, or you yourself may share values where you're looking forward and want to do something to protect or limit, um, protect the environment or limit your footprint on the environment. The other opportunity is that there's money savings involved in this. Um, capital investment on uh, solvent-based machines, looking at 65, 75, $85,000 alone just for the machine not including installation, cooling towers, and whatnot, and then the economics of the utilities needed to fuel those uh, machines uh, are drivers for looking at cost savings. And then more importantly, and most importantly to all of us, is the long-term cost savings is in labor and looking at the stains and the types of garments that come in. What are we seeing now? What are the stains that are, that are coming in with the garments? And where are we spending a lot of our labor, uh, which is long-term cost on those types of uh, stain removal. So in the real world right now, um, there's less than 1% of actual retail dry cleaners are 100% wet cleaners. But I will tell you that it's really starting to shift now um, for many, many reasons. Some of them we talked about already, whether it's regulatory or environmental, but also the fashion industry has been, made a huge pivot in the last uh, several years. And also the, the marketplace and what customers are wearing. If we were to look around in this room right now, less than 30% of these garments in here would be what's considered real true dry cleaning garments. Uh, most of you are wearing all washable or water safe textiles uh, or what we would call easy fair. 99% of what we see out in the marketplace now is considered supplemental wet cleaning, which means you have a solvent that you're tr still traditionally using or using as your primary cleaning method and you're supplementing um, the need for uh, proper stain removal, cost, or an environmental um, profile or value uh, proposition to your clients, and you're using it on the side as a supplement. And that's just to give you some analysis that we have to show you. Typically what we see in operations, because at Chrysler we service all solvents, and we've also created a bio-based solvent called K4, we know that um, in the typical K4 operations, uh, about 15% of what comes in really needs to go to wet cleaning because of that solvent's ability to deal with water. But for most of the traditional dry cleaners out there that are using uh, the other alternatives like hydrocarbon or green earth, 
we know that there is a large need for them to have a wet-based solution or water wetting solution in their plant because of the solvent's inability to break down water soluble stains or these solvents, the fear of moisture in those systems for whatever reason it may be, whether it's swaling redeposition or long-term maintenance for bacteria issues. So there's a big shift that you're going to see going on where this, this becomes a very, very valuable tool. Uh, Mark's shaking his head because he has hydrocarbon, he has K4, and he has wet cleaning, so he knows exactly what's going on, and he knows where he prefers to put his garments um, whenever he needs to get really good cleaning done efficiently. So first thing we always want to talk about is why wet cleaning. We have to understand the stain makeup of, of what comes in on textiles. And we know through analysis that on the most, for the most part, 60% of the soiling that comes in on textiles are insoluble matter. That's soot, skin, hair, sand, dust, all those insoluble things that can just be moved with some fluid or mechanical force, right? We look at uh, oil and fats, and this is the big thing everyone says. It's interesting when you get into dialogue, for especially people coming out of PERC, is like, oh, well, wet thing is not that good because it doesn't take out oils and fats. It doesn't take out good degreaser. Well, you, okay, it still has the ability to degrease. It may not be a, as effective as PERC. But if you really start looking at where your labor is, the stain material that comes in, that factor is only 10% of the staining material that comes in. So why are we so concerned about the degreasing capability of it when that's only a small portion of what we need to deal with? If you look at then our polar stains, those are our starch stains or our glues or uh, stains that are very, very difficult to come out. You're always gonna need to spend a lot of labor time on that. Permanent markers, things like that. They have bondings or complex stains that need complex chemistry to break those down. 